It's kind of crazy. It's kind of surreal. Neighbors we spoke with say they seemed like a regular family. Jan says that is the biggest misconception. It's the facade of safety because you don't know what's happening behind closed doors or in someone's home. So the only thing I can really say is to get to know your neighbors, ask questions, be a safe space for someone because you never know what's going on in their home and that opening that door to them could potentially be the thing that saves their life. Around 5.45 a.m. on January 17th, two men walked into the Buckeye police station with one admitting to shooting his wife in what he called an act of self-defense. 43, we're staying on top of breaking news in the West Valley right now. Live look from a shooting investigation in a neighborhood in Buckeye. This is near Yuma Road and Verado Way, so that's about two miles south of the I-10. Police telling us at least one person was killed here. Right now, they are not looking for any suspects, so I can tell you that we are working to get more information on the victim and also to find out what exactly police know about the suspect, because you can see the crime scene tape is up there in this neighborhood, again, near Yuma Road and Verado Way in Buckeye. The victim was identified as 52-year-old Sharon Mayo, who was sadly pronounced dead at the scene from a gunshot wound to the head and hand. 52-year-old Sharon Mayo is described by family and friends as a mother of three who was kind, genuine, honest, intelligent, focused, and the type of person who will always look out for others. Sharon was also a patient services supervisor at Sonara Quest Laboratories. She was also jokingly described as someone who never took any type of nonsense from anyone. Court documents revealed that Sharon's husband, 54-year-old Herslin Robert Mayo, told police he and Sharon had been arguing a few days prior to the murder and that it was getting worse. Sharon said she wanted a divorce, but Herslin wanted to stay married. He told investigators that around 4.45 a.m. on the morning of the shooting, he noticed Sharon's gun wasn't on her nightstand as usual. So as he was getting ready to leave, he asked her if she had a gun or a weapon for him. Herslin claimed Sharon didn't respond and scooted over towards the edge of the bed. Herslin then alleges that as he was leaving the room, his wife reached toward the area between the box spring and the mattress for what he thought was a gun, so he fired his gun at her from the doorway across the room. However, investigators said Herslin's story does not line up with forensics. They claimed the blood splatter on his shirt was consistent with him being close to Sharon when she was shot. They also said casings weren't found by the doorway, and it appeared that Sharon was shot within a few feet of the shooter. She was also lying on her side under the sheets and comforter as if she was asleep or preparing to go to sleep. After the shooting, Herslin went to his son's house. Since he couldn't wake him up, he drove to his brother's house, where he successfully woke him up by ringing the doorbell. He then instructed his brother to come with him because he did something bad, and the two went to the police station around 5.45 a.m. That's when Herslin admitted to police that he shot his wife, who was still at the house. Officers then went to the home and found Sharon dead and still lying in bed. We spoke with the victim's two sons who say she was a loving mother of three and had one grandchild. They're obviously still in shock and preferred not to speak with us on camera at this time. Person Robert Mayo, April 23rd, 1968. The suspect, identified as 54-year-old Herselin Mayo, made his first appearance in court today after police say he walked into a police station to turn himself in 45 minutes after shooting and killing his wife, 52-year-old Sharon Mayo. It all happened early Tuesday morning. Police paperwork shows that Herselin and his wife had reportedly been arguing since Saturday after Sharon said she wanted a divorce. Force. Police say Sharon was in bed at the time under the covers when Herselin shot her in the hand and head. According to police paperwork, the couple were always armed when they left the house for safety. He claims she was reaching for something before he shot her. Herselin then left and drove to his brother's home and asked him to come to the police station because he, quote, had done something bad. Paperwork says that his brother did not know Herselin shot Sharon until he got to the police station. Neighbors in the area were shocked at the news as they say the two seem like a regular loving couple. A spokesperson for the Arizona State Coalition to End Sexual Assault and Domestic Violence says this is often the biggest misconception and that you can never tell what is truly going on in someone's home behind closed doors. Over the last five years, the Arizona State Coalition to End Sexual Assault and Domestic Violence 
has reported between 86 to 100 known domestic violence-related deaths each year. On average, the coalition is getting 200 to 300 calls a month to their domestic violence helpline and more than 100 texts. They just seem like a regular like family who lived in the neighborhood. Detectives say Hursalyn shot his wife during a fight at their home. Sierra LaFond, who lives next door, believes she heard the gunshots. I was in bed. My dogs woke up. They started barking. They're not big barkers. Um, I heard some thumps, some really loud thuds sequentially after that. Hurslin reportedly then drove to a relative's home before turning himself in at the Buckeye Police Department around 445 this morning. Officers went to the home and found 52-year-old Sharon Mayo dead with gunshot wounds. Neighbors in the area say they are shocked. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of surreal because like Nothing happens over here. It's like quiet. The most you hear is like kids outside being kids. You don't walk outside your house to hearing that somebody got killed five houses down from your house. LaFon says the couple seemed happy. She believes this tragedy highlights bigger issues in our community. It's really tragic, number one. Um, number two, for the community, it's, it's alarming that, you know, Guns are easily accessible. Uh, rate of violence against women has increased. There's just inequities all around, and it's just really unfortunate that somebody lost their life. Hurston was booked into jail on a charge of first-degree murder and possessing weapons, even though he's a prohibited possessor because he has prior felony convictions. He's been held on a $1 million bond and appeared in court for the first time on January 18th. The case remains ongoing.